where are we today? How far have we come? The first Sunday of Advent, we were focusing in upon the message of the angel to Joseph. Joseph had a dream, and he dreamt that the angel came to him and told him about Mary and that he was not to put her away. He had just found out that she was pregnant, and he, being a kind man, was not going to disgrace her. Instead, he was simply going to send her away because she was pregnant. And the angel came to him in a dream and said, Do not send her away. Care for her. Marry her. Go through with the plan to marry her because she is pregnant with a child of the Most High, with the Son of God. And you will name him Jesus, for he will save the people from their sins. And he will be Emmanuel, God with uh, us. He will be Emmanuel, God with us us. Last Sunday we looked at a completely different approach to the story. This is one from Zechariah's appearance or, or, or experience of the angel who meets him in the temple. Zechariah is a priest of the high order of Abijah. He is a, a senior priest in the temple. He's working. He's doing his job. He comes into Holy of Holies to make incense offering to Yahweh. And there is the angel of the Lord standing by the table. And he is shocked. He is surprised. And the angel speaks to him and gives him a fabulous message about how what he's been praying for for years, what he and Elizabeth, who's now old and, and he is old and, and cannot conceive, she's barren. And, and yet God's going to make it possible, as it was true with Abraham and Sarah, God's going to make it possible for her to have a child. And unfortunately, unlike Joseph, who his response was immediately to wake up and do what the angel said, unfortunately, Zechariah, he questioned the angel. So with Joseph, we have this positive response, yes, sir, and does it. With Zechariah, we have, how can it possibly be? Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm old and she's old. How is it possible? And so what happens? Zechariah gets struck mute. He cannot speak. And the angel says, you will be mute until the day that it is fulfilled. And he is. He comes out. He makes gestures to them, but he can't speak. He goes home. Elizabeth conceives a child. And then that brings us to today. In the sixth month, which, which month? The sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. So here we have the story for today. Mary, a young woman, a young maiden. In the Greek it says Parthenos, virgin. In the Hebrew references that are often cited here, the word is Alma, and Alma means a young maiden, just on the cusp, just on the precipice of being able to become a mother. A young maiden is selected here. And the, and the angel comes to her, to Mary, and says, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Right there you have an amazing message. You, you could preach a sermon on this one. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. How, how much more blessed can you be to be called the, the favored one of God and that Yahweh, the creator of the universe, is with you? It's an amazing thing to be said about this young girl. After all, she is just a young girl. She's not been to seminary. She hasn't been to graduate school. She hasn't studied great under the great theologians. She's just a young maiden. Filled with simple, yet life-transforming faith in God, as we will see in a minute. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was perplexed, as you would be perplexed. Not to the point of disbelieving, unlike Zechariah, but perplexed. She was perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be and so the angel continues don't be afraid don't be afraid afraid mary for you have found favor with god it's okay there's nothing to be afraid of there's nothing to fear here 
You have found favor. You have found a place in the love of God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. Same message that was given to Joseph is given now here to her before that was given to Joseph. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High and the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. What an amazing message. This is the Messianic proclamation. She's going to give birth to the Messiah, the Mashiach, the Anointed One of God. And here she is. She's just a handmaid. She's just a young woman, a young girl. By our definition, a young child. 12, 13 years old, by their definition, husband high, but, but by our understanding, she's awfully young. She's found favor with God. And she's going to be the mother of the one for which all the people of Israel have been longing and praying and expecting to deliver them from the occupation of the Romans and from the occupation of sin and evil, from the occupation of unrighteousness. The one for whom they have been waiting She's going to give birth to him. Mary's response is natural. But unlike Zechariah's, it's not disbelieving. She's asking for information. How can this possibly be? How's this going to happen? I am only a virgin. And the angel's response is stunning. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power, the transforming power, the energizing power, the explosive power, the energetic power, the life-changing, world-changing power of the Most High will overshadow you. The same word overshadow is used later on in the Gospels for the Mount of Transfiguration experience when the, when the cloud descends over Mount Tabor and the voice of God comes from it saying, this is my Son, the Beloved, listen to Him. And Jesus is fluorescing like a stained glass window. That word overshadow, it says that the, the, the cloud of God, the Holy Spirit of God overshadows Peter, James, and John there on the mountain. The same word is used. She will be overshadowed protected, shielded, defended. She will be overshadowed by the power of the Most High. And because she is overshadowed, because God's protecting love comes to overshadow her, she will be able to conceive and the child to be born will be agios, holy. He will be called Son of God. Some of your translations may indicate this. There is no the Son of God listed. Son of God. He will be called by this title, Son of God. The power of the Most High. The presence of the Almighty. The Emmanuel, the God with us. The Yeshua, the Yahweh delivers His people. One. That's who this Mashiach is to be. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in case you're wondering, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. Just as she is too old and barren, you are too young, yet the power of the Most High is present to enable miracles. For nothing, verse 37... For nothing will be impossible with God. This is an amazing proclamation. And quite frankly, most of us, if we were offered this responsibility, if we were offered this blessing, if we were offered this duty and chore, if we were offered this role to play in our lives, if we were offered this incredible calling, most of us would say, "Uh, I got something else to do. I got other plans. Look, Gabriel, I, I, I'm going to be married to Joseph. He's, 
He's a good contractor for the Roman military. He's a carpenter. He's going to earn a great living for us. We're going to have kids and be happy together. Why do you want me to screw everything up this way? We would have said, no, thank you. We've got other plans, other things we want to do. Rather than be caught into something that could be taken as a scandal. Or the responsibility of bearing the Mashiach, the one who will deliver the people of God into this world. I'm not sure we would respond as she responds. Here am I. Listen to the response. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Wow. Chosen one of God, beloved of God, now overshadowed by God, protected by God, blessed by God, servant of God. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. No argument, no complaint, no whining, no questioning, other than, you know, how's this going to happen? After all, I am a virgin. No disbelieving. Just simply, here am I, a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And in these words, this young maiden, in these words, this young woman of faith, in these words, this woman becomes the instrument, the means of grace through whom salvation comes into this world. She becomes, as the Eastern Orthodox Church calls her, the Theotokos, the, the God-bearer, or as sometimes it's translated into English, the mother of God. She becomes the one who brings salvation. Emmanuel, God with us, Yeshua delivers, Yahweh saves into this world by her act of faith saying yes, her act of willingness to say yes, and become an instrument or a means of grace for all. This young girl, by her response of faith, changes everything. We look for examples throughout Scripture of people to emulate, to people to be like. And what greater example can we have? There is no greater example than this. A willingness to say, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Regardless of the difficulties, regardless of the future pains that it will bring, regardless of the sorrow that it will bring, regardless of anything, here am I, a servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. This is an example for us. To hear the message of the angel. And not to argue and not to complain and not to whine and not to disbelieve. But to say, here am I, a servant of the Lord. May we, as we move now towards the fourth Sunday of Advent, may we hear the proclamation of the angel. May we be like Mary and proclaim, here am I, a servant of the Lord. May we do as God calls us and share the Christ child with all. For as Mary was the Theotokos, the God-bearer, bearing Christ into the world, giving birth to Christ, again, giving birth to God in the womb and giving Christ to the world, so also we are called to give birth to God in the womb of our hearts and share Christ, the Prince of Peace, with a world that so desperately needs to hear and receive the good news, the good news of the Prince of Peace, the good news of the love of God. The message of hatred and violence and separation and division reigns in this world, my friends, and we are called to be bearers of the good news of the Prince of Peace, the God of peace to all. And bear through the womb of our hearts by faith 
the love of God to every person we meet. May we be like Mary. Listen to the voice of the angel and then respond, let it be with me according to your word. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may the people of God say, Amen. listening to a sermon by Dr. Gregory Neal, Senior Pastor of the First United Methodist Church in Commerce, Texas, and Rector of Grace Incarnate Ministries. Copyright 2015 by Dr. Gregory S. Neal. All rights reserved. For more information and for other sermons by Dr. Neal, visit us on the web at www.revneal.org. That's www.revneal.org. You are also invited to visit us in person at First United Methodist Church, 1709 Highway 24, Commerce, Texas, 75428. This program was produced by Dr. Greg Neal.